We're now joined by the former Republican governor of Arizona, Jan Brewer. She was often in the headlines for what critics called her hardline approach to immigration and border security. She's a supporter of Donald Trump. Governor Brewer joins us from Phoenix. Governor, I asked this of, uh, of uh, Reed Dickens about blue states turning red, red states turning blue. Is Arizona going to vote for Hillary? Absolutely not. Donald Trump will carry Arizona. The latest poll by CNN, we were winning 49 to 44 uh, today. And I think that it will carry on through the um, election. Uh, we've got a ground game going on. We've got more absentee voting uh, returned. And usually the Democrats are really, that's their, that's their game plan because Democrats tend to vote early and Republicans show up at the polls. So I feel very, very confident that uh, Arizona will stay red and we will deliver 11 electoral votes to Mr. Trump. We'll send and I believe we're going to win Nevada. Uh, that, we'll that's a blue state. We're going to win Nevada. Will Senator McCain hold his seat? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I, what's he's the, got 10 points ahead of uh, Ann. Yeah. What's the big issue in Arizona? I think that uh, Obamacare is a huge issue. You know, our uh, increase in Obamacare for those people that participate went, is, went up day before yesterday 116%. Uh, the federal government didn't deliver what they promised. Um, you couldn't keep your doctor. You couldn't keep your provider. Uh, the deductibles are going sky high in your copay, so they can't afford to even use the insurance. So I think Donald Trump's uh, policy on uh, repealing it and replacing it with something that actually works and that is affordable to take care of that population has resonated not only in Arizona but across the country. And then, of course, jobs, Larry. Uh, we know that Donald Trump is a job creator, and people want jobs, and they want our jobs in America. And Donald Trump has promised that, and his policy people are working on it, and he will deliver that and begin that in the first 100 days of his presidency. How do you, we asked Reed to assess this, how do you assess this whole campaign, which seems to be a negative campaign all the way around? Well, I think that it has been somewhat negative. There's so, so many uh, negative things that have, ha have happened in this campaign, but I think the big bombshell was the other day when uh, Director Comey decided to uh, reopen and start another investigation on Hillary Clinton. Uh, she has done some really terrible things that I think the mom and dads and across the country realize that she has not been truthful and that she has uh, put our national security uh, on the line uh, for her own benefit, her secret server, and sending it to uh, uh, Huma, and then Uma sending it to Wiener, and uh, here we go. I mean, it's criminal. It's actually criminal. And I think that we should get to the resolve of that before the election, not afterwards, because I do believe, as I do believe that other people believe, that there will be an indictment against her. You said that the GOP undecideds have nowhere else to go. Do you think that the Republican establishment, those people, will vote for Trump? I do. Larry, we're very enth enthusiastic about it. I think they've come home. We see Paul Ryan that voted for Donald Trump. Uh, uh, Governor Walker has voted for and supported uh, uh, Donald Trump. Governor Haley out of South Carolina is on board. Uh, these are some of the people that were a little bit resistant, but now they've come on home. And um, that will mean a lot uh, to the people that they represent. I think that they will uh, get out and support their governors. So many, many of the people that were a uh, little disappointed that their candidate didn't win are now, they're home, they're, they're Republicans. And not only that, Larry, what Donald Trump has done is he's brought so many uh, people that have never participated in the voting process, people that have never uh, registered to vote, people that have registered but never have voted, have come back home and now are going to show up. And that's what we call the silent majority. And they're going to turn out. They're going to turn out on Election Day, and we're going to win uh, the presidency for uh, Donald. It's going to well, happen. It's been a unique election. As a woman, were you not offended by the release tapes of what Donald Trump said uh, in the Access Hollywood story? 
Oh, I was. I, I thought it was disgusting, and I was offended. I thought it was terrible, and I appreciated the fact that it that he came forward immediately and he apologized. It was ten years ago, and uh, again, uh, you know, I think people can get beyond that. Uh, he talked badly, but the bottom line is is that you know we can forgive and forget that, but. Hillary Clinton lies to us on a daily basis, and her reputation for 30 years is she has not been a truth teller. And we know for a fact that she has put our country uh, in, in, in the range of, uh, of safety to zero um, by her server and her emails and the, who she has been dealing with over these last few years with pay to play, filling her own pockets through the Clinton Foundation. I mean, the stories just go on and on and on. Hillary Clinton is not a truth teller. Hillary Clinton is a liar. But you're saying it's criminal. The attorney, the uh, FBI, the FBI director refused to recommend an indictment. All he said now is he's looking at other emails. How do you know it's criminal when the Justice Department and the FBI has thus far said it's not? Well, 650,000 new emails on Wiener's uh, server that Uma Abedin obviously shared with them, and it was said, each and every one of those, when you send classified mail or security mail, how many they find, she will be held accountable for if there is justice in our country and if we believe in the rule of law. And uh, obviously, they wouldn't have pursued the investigation if they didn't feel as if they had to move forward on it and that there was, you know, um, knowing uh, that there were uh, items in there that were very, very serious. There is no way that Director Comey would have done what he did uh, at this uh, couple of days ago. I, I, I mean, why would he? Why? It was behind him. But no, it's, 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 a, it's a bombshell. It's devastating to Hillary Clinton's campaign at this point in time. Um, no campaign would ever like to have that information a week before the election dropped on them. You can't recover. You can't recover. I think it'll cause Democrats, you talk about suppression of votes, it'll cause Democrats just to stay home if they can't cross the line and vote for Trump. What about the Hispanic voters in Arizona? How large a base is that? They're certainly going to vote for Hillary, aren't they? I, I, you know, I do. I believe that a lot of them are going to vote for Hillary. I think that they've done a good job getting out the vote. They certainly have done a good job in uh, getting people registered. I think it's like 30 percent Hispanics are registered to vote. 55 percent of Caucasians, whites, are, are registered to vote. Uh, but, you know, we don't really know, in fact, if they're going to who, who or, or what they're going to vote for. But I think that they've done a good job, but I don't believe that uh, they're going to they're, they're, they're not going to turn Arizona uh, blue. That, that, that is not going to happen. In a Trump administration, would you take a job? You know, I'm not looking for a job. I would do anything that I could to help Mr. Trump. I've known him not as long as you, but I've uh -huh. known him for about eight, nine years, and I find him very qualified and, uh, uh, and intelligent. And obviously, we all know very, very uh, successful. No one builds a corporation like he has without being smart. And uh, to bring that expertise and that experience, and he has surrounded himself with such great policy people that will lead him through this, and so we have the best of both worlds. We're going to have the policy wonks, and we're going to have a businessman. Um, and he's going to listen to the people, and he's going to make America great again. Thank you, Governor. Always good talking with you, and I hope your cold feels better.